Amen. Always love to hear the music and see the children in and out of the congregation taking up mission offerings. We never know when someday some of these young people may be in the mission field themselves, like the Steck family has been. So anyway, so this is kind of a, a two-piece children's story. I'm going to give, I'm going to ask some questions, give a couple of scriptures, and then I'm going to highlight it with um, a, a vignette, a little picture of someone's story that this happened to. So can God turn our many failures into success? And we kind of discussed this in Sabbath school, right? We seem to pray and reach out to God when, oh no, what's happening? Why is this happening? I thought when I came to the Lord, everything would work out. But you can look up, and I can't count all the number of inventors that if they had given up, we wouldn't have things like the light bulb, the airplane, the telephone, right? Any number of things. So we have to realize that when things, when things look like failure, and we can take a look at Daniel's life, Joseph's life, in the Bible, and it's not really for God, human failure is really his success, because what does Paul tell us? For when I am weak, then I am strong. Why? Because if we're in Christ, it's in his strength Amen. that we stand. Amen. And we also have to realize that success, if viewed in the wrong way, can lead to failure. One pastor had several people tell him that his sermons were among the best they'd ever heard. He then asked his wife, how many great preachers do you think there are in the world? She wisely answered, one less than you think. <laughs> so we have to be careful how we view success, right? And success is really in the, in the finish. It's not in the beginning. So I want to tell you children, do not despise small beginnings, Amen. little, tiny, insignificant chores and duties. And again, you think of Joseph's life. He became Potiphar's servant, right? A servant does exactly what he's told, precisely what he's told all the time. Joseph did it with such humility, with such accuracy, with such um, honor to God that Potiphar ends up putting him in charge of his entire house. So he's really not a slave any longer. And God, he kept humble before the Lord because even in the face of uh, being falsely accused and going to prison, he still honored God. Right? So, and I'm going to read a scripture here. This is Philippians. Hang on. careful. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Brethren, I count my, not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So we always want to look at Christ's finish for us, right? So I'm going to read a little vignette here of a famous person in our United States history. And it says, I tell you, once I told a friend during the toughest years of his presidency, at night when I lay my head on my pillow, and it is often pretty late, and I think of the things that I have come before me during the day, and the decisions that I have made, I say to myself, well, I've done the best I could and turn over and go to sleep. So I'm not going to tell you um, exactly who it is yet. There's something that he's got. White House aide Harry Hopkins once told um, Labor Secretary Francis Perkins, it seems unreasonable at times, 
but he falls back on something that gives him complete assurance that everything is going to be all right. And then his wife observed once, probably the thing that took most courage in his life was his mastery and his meeting of polio. I never heard him complain, and though anyone remembering how athletic and strong he had been as a young man could not fail to realize what a terrific battle must have gone on within him. He just accepted it as one of those things that was given you as discipline in life. And isn't that true for all of us? God is the one who takes us through the trial that disciplines us. There have been a plowing, okay, after his struggle with polio, he seemed less arrogant, less smug, less superficial, more focused, more complex, more interesting. There had been a plowing up of his nature. The man emerged completely warm-hearted with new humility of spirit and a firmer understanding of philosophical concepts. And so we want to remember that it is God who is actually in charge of our beginning, our journey, and our finish. We have to make the choice to stay connected with him. And as long as we're connected with him, whether it's Daniel, whether it's Paul, whether it's Joseph, we can see that our end will be to his honor and glory. And though the world may see it as failure, God sees it as success. So always keep yourself in God's trusting hands. You may go to your seats. Oh.